What's happening, everybody? On today's show, we're going to get you set for week three of the SEC and give you our picks as we're picking some upsets to happen. We'll tell you which ones. Taylor McArg will stop by to give us his thoughts on the SEC and much more. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this year with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, we're going to get to the lines. We'll get to our picks for this weekend. But first, we've got some news to get into. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Oh. Makes the handoff. Around the conference. Shane Beamer kind of uh, playing close to the vest with some of his injuries. We already know they lost linebacker Muhammad Kaba and defensive end Jordan Strand out for the rest of the year with torn ACLs. Some additional uh, reports as uh, Shane Beamer listing several players questionable, including defensive backs David Spaulding, Cam Smith, R.J. Roderick, defensive lineman Alex Huntley, wide receiver Corey Rucker. Beamer talking with the media said, Hopefully, we'll have those guys on Saturday. If not, our depth isn't where it needs to be for sure, but we have some really good players on this football team, and we're going to take a real a bunch of really good guys out there on Saturday to play against a really, really good Georgia team and a really, really well-coached Georgia team as well. Certainly showing his flowers to Georgia. South Carolina will host the Bulldogs this Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN. Meanwhile, over at LSU, Brian Kelly and his team playing their first SEC game of the season. According to the ESPN Football Power Index, they have LSU as a slight favorite to beat Mississippi State. The FBI gives LSU a 56.6% chance of winning the game against the 2-0 Mississippi State Bulldogs. Now, as for LSU, Brian Kelly talking about some of their injuries. I uh, talked about the injury status of cornerback Colby Richardson as well as defensive end Quincy Wiggins. Both are expected to play. Wiggins is coming off a list Frank injury. Kelly said he will play special teams, and they hope he'll be 100% by next week. Meanwhile, cornerback Colby Richardson is one of their starters. Uh, he said he had a minor thigh contusion, but has responded well and has practiced all week. Tigers will also welcome the return of running back John Emery, who was suspended for the first two games with academic issues dating back to last year. And lastly, cornerback Seven Banks expected to play this weekend against Mississippi State. Uh, his place in LSU's DB rotation will depend on how he feels and how much rust he has. Uh, Banks came in as a transfer from Ohio State this offseason. Over Texas A&M, they're going to look to bounce back on their home loss to Appalachian State last weekend as they play host to Miami at Kyle Field. It's only the fourth time the Aggies and Hurricanes have met on the field in 1944, the Aggies cruised to a 70 to 14 win. Two teams have played a home and home in 07 and 08 in Miami and College Station, with the Canes winning both of those games. Miami enters this game 2 and 0 with wins over Bethune Cookman and Southern Miss, and they will head on the road for the first time this season. There won't be uh, any seats available at Kyle Field Saturday night, uh, according to several reports. The game is a sellout. So that's 102,733 people that will be packed into Kyle Field. Uh, Miami will be reportedly down a key player as well. The Miami Herald reporting that Hurricanes wideout Xavier Restrepo is out indefinitely with a foot injury, reporting he will not be available on Saturday night. That'll kick off at 8 p.m. Central on ESPN. Over at Arkansas, Sam Pittman and the boys keep things rolling, and K.J. Jefferson a bit a big part of that for the Razorbacks. Two weeks into the season, uh, K.J. has completed 76% of his passes, four touchdowns, no picks, looking like a much-improved passer coming into the season. Also has 129 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns. According to Pro Football Focus, Jefferson's 14 missed tackles as a runner leads the nation. That puts him ahead of Je Georgia Tech's Jeff Sims and Oklahoma State's Spencer Sanders among QBs. Jefferson and the Razorbacks 
will face Missouri State on Saturday. Over at Auburn, Brian Harson and his bunch welcoming in a top 25 team in Penn State this weekend. And Eric Keesaw, the offensive coordinator, wants to see a little bit more out of Robbie Ashford. He said that Ashford has been effective as a running a- option, but the coaches want to put more on his plate. Ashford has made several explosive plays uh, with his running ability, and Keesaw likes that part of his game. He said, look, Robbie gives you an element that really is what we call ungame planned yards. So like your game plan that you don't get those yards because he can pull the ball down and go. So I think it's really important to use Robbie in that way. It'll take a lot, uh, whether it's C.J. Finley or Robbie Ashford, a lot of improvement expected there at the quarterback spot for Auburn. Meanwhile, over at Missouri, Mizzou had a uh, quarterback Brady Cook on this week's injury report that coming from Dave Matter of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Tigers are going to play Abilene Christian on Saturday. Brady Cook did practice Tuesday and Wednesday and met with the media after that Wednesday practice. Did take some big hits against Kansas State last weekend, but no indication that he is unlikely to play. Meanwhile, over at uh, Kentucky, the Wildcats still celebrating after that big win in the Swamp against Florida last weekend. And uh, the university has made a big investment towards Mark Stoops' program, according to Matt Jones of Kentucky Sports Radio, longtime benefactors, uh, Joe and Kelly Kraft, have donated $7.5 million to renovate the Nutter Fieldhouse and build a new track and field stadium. And the uh, Wildcats football program has practiced inside the Fieldhouse for years. It's been a source of frustration for Stoops, who has repeatedly talked about the need to have their own facility. Uh, of course, things heated up this offseason. John Calipari calling Kentucky a basketball school, saying they need their own new facility uh, of their own. But uh, sounded like, at least for this time, Mark Stoops has won the battle. And Kentucky going to get some upgrades very soon. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to catch up with our buddy Taylor McCarg, get his thoughts on a couple of the SEC matchups from last weekend and heading into this weekend. But first, I want to remind you about our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports information throughout the season. We're going to get to all the SEC games this weekend in segment three of this show, and we'll give you all the latest Bet Online uh, odds. You can go find them. Just search Bet Online online. Of course, uh, BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way for you to check in on all your favorite sports and events. And they got podcasts, they got stories on everything from horse racing to boxing, golf, all of that. But, of course, uh, just search Bet Online and get all those odds for the college football games happening this weekend. They will have you covered. I mentioned uh, I didn't do so well in week two, looking for a big bounce back in week three. And uh, I like some of these upsets happening this weekend. We're going to make those picks. We'll get into it in segment three of this show. But, again, one last reminder, Bet Online, go check them out this weekend. It is where the game starts. Going along here, Locked On SEC. Thanks again for making us your first listen every day. One of our favorite people to catch up with, Taylor McArg. He's a former college football quarterback, and uh, he's traveling around the country every week calling games for ESPN. Love to get his thoughts always on the SEC. And he joins us now. Uh, Taylor, let's start here. Uh, When we talked with you last week, you were with the majority in predicting a dominant Alabama win. Last week in Austin, I kept thinking maybe the Longhorns could give Bama a game, and they certainly gave them one. But you, like many last week, were a little off on that uh, prediction, my friend. Man, I could not have been more wrong. I went all over every radio station I did, every hit I did last week, saying I thought Alabama was going to put up a 50-burger and Texas would be able to keep up. And that was the most impressive part of the performance for Texas was that defensive line because they were winning at the point of attack. I mean, it was there were times they were getting after Bryce Young, sometimes with just four, which that's something we haven't seen in Austin in a very long time, and winning those one-on-one matchups, shedding blocks, and a, a big part of that was just the energy and enthusiasm that they played with. Quinn Ewers obviously played well until he got hurt, and it's unfortunate that he did get hurt, uh, but they, you know, it's been well covered. Texas should have won that game. There were there were key points in that game that if really one of those things goes their way, they'd probably win. The, the challenge now is trying to sustain that as a program because 
in the SEC, that's going to be there for every week, right? You're going to play on the road in hostile environments, and so it's a little easier to uh, get up four games that consistently, where in the Big 12, you're not going to have you know, some of those environments on the road in the Big 12 just aren't the same as the SEC, as we know. But this week especially, I think we'll learn a lot about the maturity of this team and how they handle themselves against UTSA because they should win this game by two or three scores. It should never really be in question. I know this is a good UTSA team, but based on what we saw last week, if Texas comes out and handles their business, they shouldn't have any trouble with the Roadrunners. Speaking of the state of Texas, uh, Taylor, a uh, tough loss for the Longhorns, but an even tougher loss for the Aggies. What did you make of, of Texas A&M losing to Appalachian State? We well, in the state of Texas, and I don't think anybody had a worse week than uh, than the Aggies. And especially when you consider that App State team, that defense a week prior gave up 63 points at home. North Carolina. And then they turn around and that defense holds Texas A&M to 14 points. Now, App State executed their game plan to perfection. They just played keep away. They said, we're going to try and control the clock and limit your possessions as best we can. And that's exactly what they did. And I think there's there's two problems for A&M's offense right now. I think it starts with the scheme because there are there's enough talent on that roster right now to be able to manufacture ways to get your skilled players the ball regardless of who's a quarterback. The other problem is I don't think Haynes King is the guy. He's had, I think it's six turnovers, or six interceptions now and two fumbles against mostly FCS teams in his action and then a group of five teams. And I, I, to me, the expectations in College Station now are with the recruiting classes they're bringing in, we want to try and knock on the door of the, of the college football playoff. And I don't think he's going to get you there. I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see Max Johnson in this game. Um, but you never know with Jimbo. He may say, look, we're still committed to our guy and we're going to run him out there again against Miami no matter what. So um, the, that's the trouble, though, for me with my, with Texas A&M is I just don't see a lot to be excited about after the first two weeks. They're going to have to come out and really show something against Miami and get a win at home before I put any stock in that team moving forward. Wow. Okay, so does, in your opinion, the offense bounce back this week and do the Aggies get a win at home over Miami? I don't think so. Um, I, the, the more I dig into this, I think they are they are going to have to figure out a way to manufacture explosive plays on offense. And it could be proven wrong. They may come out and be a little more creative and get some more opportunities because, again, against that State, they just didn't have the ball. Like at any point in that game, they lost the time of possession by over 20 minutes in that game. Um, I think Miami slept walked through their win last week against Southern Miss. But there's obviously a lot of talent on that team. Um, and man, I worry in this game about if this is close late, if this gets into the second half and it's a one possession game, I think that's where you might see things start to tighten up for the Aggies where now you're really having to press. Um, it just, the, the entire mood in College Station right now is, is not a good one. Taylor, any thought on the two games uh, against ranked opponents that I think have a good shot of being upsets this weekend? LSU uh, hosting Mississippi State this weekend in Baton Rouge. And then, of course, uh, top 25 Penn State heading to the Plains of Auburn this weekend. Any thought on uh, either of those games? We're going to learn a lot about LSU this week. And is that Florida State game an outlier? And we look back and, and they figure it out on the opposite side of the ball. Or does Mississippi State come in? Because Mississippi State looked good against Arizona. And Arizona has improved. But they controlled that game start to finish. For Penn State and Auburn, man, I don't have faith in either one of the quarterbacks that are playing in that game. Um, I am not going to venture a guess at, at how that one shakes out. The only other game this weekend that I have circled because it's got some implications for an outside chance for a team to make the college football playoff is BYU. Because I thought they looked pretty good against Baylor. If they go to Oregon and get a win, I think you have to legitimately put them in the conversation for if they were on the table, this might be a playoff team. Now, they didn't, they're, they're down there two key receivers, I believe, again this week. But if, again, if they go up to Austin and they get a win at Oregon, start to pay attention to BYU. Yeah. And by the way, they get Arkansas later in the year, who's a, currently a top 10 team. If they can beat Arkansas, Man, I think you got enough resume wins if they beat Oregon this weekend. I, I'm with you. BYU would would absolutely deserve a spot 
in the uh, in the playoff. He is Taylor McCarg. Uh, good to talk with you, man. We'll do it again next week. That sounds great, guys. I appreciate it. All right, that is uh, Taylor McCarg covering all things college football. When we return, we'll give you picks from the uh, bet online betting lines for SEC Week Three. That's coming out your way next. Thanks again for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. I roll along here, locked on SEC, and uh, man, we've got some big, big lines to get to in week three of the SEC and a couple of games that we're picking upsets in. So let's just dive right into it. Let's get into our betting lines. Again, these are fr- uh, courtesy of our friends at Bet Online. First, let's get out of the way a couple of games uh, in the SEC that do not have lines right now up at Bet Online. Uh, Youngstown State is at number nine, Kentucky. That'll be a 12 Eastern on the SEC network. Again, no line on this game, but Youngstown, they are 2 0 with dominating wins over Duquesne and Dayton. Kentucky coming off that emotional road win in the swamp last week. Uh, I expect maybe Kentucky to sleepwalk a little early in this one. I think they still win convincingly, but maybe not that massive blowout that people might be expecting another one abilene christian is at one and one mizzou that'll be at 11 a.m central on espn plus abilene two and oh with wins over lamar and purry view mizzou coming off that beat down at the hands of kansas state looking to get back on track no line in this one either but mizzou they need to put up a crooked number let's hope brady cook is healthy ready to go and uh let's get luther burden going more on offense this week Uh, And then one more we don't have a line on. Missouri State is at Arkansas. That'll be 6 p.m. Central on ESPN+. Missouri State also 2-0 with wins over Central Arkansas and UT Martin. Their quarterback, Jason Shelley, he's thrown for six touchdown passes, no interceptions. Again, no line on this one, but let's see how Arkansas's defense responds. Arkansas is second to last in the SEC in yards given up, only ahead of Vandy and also near the bottom in scoring defense, allowing 27 points per game. So let's see if the Razorback defense can shut down Missouri State. All right, now let's get into some of the games we do have lines on. First up, it is Georgia versus South Carolina, 12 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Georgia leads all of college football in total points, allowed at one and a half points per game. They gave up three to Oregon in week one, zero last week to Samford. Meanwhile, South Carolina, they're averaging over 32 points a game of offense. I think South Carolina will be able to score some points this week, probably coming mostly in the second half when Georgia's built up a comfortable enough lead. But I could see maybe something like a 38-17 win that gets the Gamecocks to cover. Again, uh, maybe not. Maybe you can't hold Georgia's offense under 40 points, but uh, we will see. Uh, One number that stood out to me in this one, South Carolina's rushing offense you know, with Marshawn Lloyd and all those great backs back there, they want to be a dominant run team. 125th in the country in rushing offense. Not great for the Gamecocks. Next up, we've got Penn State is at Auburn. Auburn, a three-point underdog, 230 Central on CBS. I'm picking this one to be an ugly, low-scoring game. Auburn's defense shows up. Maybe they get a pick six or at least gives the offense a short field once or twice. Auburn, 14th best rushing offense in the country at 247 yards a game on the ground. Granted, it was against Mercer and San Jose State. But I think Auburn wins an ugly close one. I'm taking Auburn with the upset, 27-24. Give me Auburn plus the three. Give me Auburn straight up with the upset over number 22, Penn State. Next up, it is Ole Miss at Georgia Tech. Ole Miss, a 16-and-a-half point favorite. This one will be 3.30 Eastern on ABC. It sounds like we're going to see a lot of Jackson Dart in this one at quarterback. Tech got beat up by Clemson in week one before rolling Western Carolina last week. I think Ole Miss's offense rolls, particularly with that run game that ranks 11th in the country in rushing offense, and I think Ole Miss covers that 16-and-a-half. Also in the afternoon, 2.30 uh, Central on the CBS Sports Network. It is Vandy at one and one Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois, two and a half point home favorites. Numbers that stand out to me for Vandy, their passing defense ranks 118th, total defense ranks 108. I, 
I liked Vandy a lot getting that two and zero start. And Mike Wright really came back down to earth last week, and uh, they ended up going to AJ Swan. But I just can't trust Vandy's defense. I'll take Northern Illinois minus the two and a half. I'd love to see Vandy go up there and find a way to get a win. I just don't think they do it. At 3 p.m. Central on the SEC Network, it'll be Louisiana Monroe at Alabama. Alabama, a 49-and-a-half point favorite at home. Keep in mind, uh, Nick Saban's first season at Alabama, he lost to Louisiana Monroe. I don't think that happens this weekend. Uh, but one number that stood out to me, Alabama's passing offense, 65th in the country. We're talking about Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. And he hasn't played bad. Obviously, he played well enough to go get Alabama the win uh, last week in Austin in a hostile environment, beating Texas. But, man, it certainly speaks volumes about where Alabama's wide receivers are. Where's John Mechie? Where's Jamison Williams? Oh, well, they're off to the NFL. Somebody needs to step up and be that go-to guy, whether it's Jermaine Burton, whether it's Kobe Prentice. You know, hope Tyler Harrell gets in there uh, eventually and we get to see what he can do for Bama. But, look, this line's so big. I think Bama wins big. You all Monroe could lose by seven touchdowns and still cover the 49 and a half. If I'm betting, I'm taking you all Monroe to cover that line. But Bama wins by 49. <laughs> all right, let's get into the night games. Mississippi State at LSU. LSU, 5 p.m. Central on ESPN in Death Valley. And they're getting two and a half. LSU, two and a half point home underdogs. One thing that stands out to me with both these teams, and LSU beat up on Southern last week to improve their numbers. But how about scoring offense? Both teams scoring 44 points a game, both ranked 22nd in the country. So if both offenses do that, what are both defenses doing? Well, Mississippi State, really good at stopping the run. They rank 30th in the country. They rank 43rd in total defense. LSU ranks 54th in total defense. I just think that at night in Death Valley, by the time you get to the fourth quarter, that sun will be setting, that crowd will be loud and lively. And I think Brian Kelly gets his first win in the SEC this weekend. Low-scoring game. LSU's got to play ball control, time of possession to get John Emery back at running back. But I think LSU upsets Mississippi State in Baton Rouge Saturday night. Three more games to get through. Akron is at Tennessee. The Vols are a 46-and-a-half-point home favorite. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Akron just got blanked at Michigan State 52-0. The Vols, uh, week one, they hung 59 on Ball State before they uh, got that road win at Pitt last week. I think Tennessee covers the 46-and-a-half. Again, big, large number, but I think the Vols are going to score at will on offense, and they'll cover that. Uh, also at night, we'll get South Florida at Florida. The Gators are 24-and-a-half-point favorites, 7.30 Eastern on the SEC Network. F South Florida lost to BYU 50-21 to before crushing Howard last week. Florida, they only scored 29 points week one against Utah and only scored 16 last week in the loss to Kentucky. And now they're favored to cover by three touchdowns and a field goal? But South Florida is terrible. I'll, I'll take this week as a bounce-back game for Anthony Richardson. I think Florida will run the ball down South Florida's throat, and I'll like Florida to cover. And then lastly, we've got Miami at Texas A&M. The Aggies, six-point home favorites, 8 p.m. Central on ESPN. Let me just give you this. Tyler Van Dyke, a pretty good quarterback at Miami. He beat ranked NC State. He beat ranked Pitt last season. So far this year, he's been up on Bethune-Cookman and Southern Miss. But looking at the Aggies, total offense ranks 103rd. Man, that's ugly. Miami, they rank 16th, over 500 yards of offense a game. Call me crazy. I just feel like a packed Kyle field that the Aggies are going to respond, whether it's Haynes King finally gets his crap together or whether it's Max Johnson, the former LSU quarterback, gets in there and gets this offense going. Somebody's got to put the jumper cables on the battery and get this thing started. I think Texas A&M finds a way to win in a shootout with Miami, and I think the offense finally clicks for the Aggies. They can't afford losing this one because they got a big date with Arkansas next week. And if they lose that one, man, that could potentially be three losses in a row. I like the Aggies to cover the six at home 
and win against Miami. And there you have it. Those are our week three picks in the SEC. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Uh, that is going to do it. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Go check out our friends at Bet Online if you need any betting advice or tips for this weekend. Again, all those lines courtesy of Bet Online. Now you can go make your second listen. Check out some of our other great podcasts along the Locked On Podcast Network covering your team every day. We got Locked On Bama. We got Locked On Georgia. We got Locked On uh, Auburn, LSU, every team covered. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked On SEC. We'll talk to you guys on Monday. Happy betting. Uh, Let's go pull off some upsets in the SEC.